All right, all right, all right. Let's see here. Looks like everything is working like it should. Uh, make sure I got this like I need to. There we go. All right, everybody, welcome to Dark Cancer Interviews. I got another guest. His name is Jerry Fu. He'll join us in a second. Uh, let's get started, shall we? <laughs> How you doing? There we go. Oh, you know, just another day in paradise, just you? trying to survive. Ah, <laughs> How was your day going? Oh man, it's uh, it's almost over. <laughs> sweet, so, sweet, yeah, sweet. It's all good. All right, so could you go ahead and tell me uh, what your reason is as to why you're interested in uh, uh, being part of one of my podcasts or continuously being part of it? <laughs> I. Yeah, I uh, I just love meeting motivated people, uh, having meaningful conversations, and just being excited knowing that people are going to well, benefit. From there aren't very many people that appreciate that type of thing, I could be honest with you. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, your name is? <laughs> My name is <laughs> it's Jerry It's just for Poo. the sake of the recording. I'm so sorry. All right. Sure. No, we're good. That's fine. That's I'm here fine. for you. So what, can you tell me what it is that you do on a, on a day-to-day basis? Sure. Uh, I currently split time between my day job as a pharmacist. Uh, but uh, the, the main thing that I'm really excited about is just kind of growing this plant to, you know, have this coaching business to focus on conflict resolution for Asian oh, American that is, That's fair. Uh, I mean, being one of the minority myself, mm-hmm. there's a lot of... Hmm. How, how do I word it? There is definitely a lot of conflict issues going about nowadays, and there are. Uh, how do I put it? There's not a lot of people trying to solve them. It's so easy to say, "Hey, go to a therapist," or uh, or such. But if everything was just emotional mm-hmm. based, then uh, I think a lot of the problems would be solved. I beg to differ, though. But uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts mm-hmm. on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, an hour <laughs> later, go ahead. You, can, uh, you can talk about it now. No, well, I mean, it's just, well, I mean, that's just the, the start of it, right? I mean, because I mean, I, I have, I see a counselor, and you know, that's, it's great to have a conversation to really unpack, okay, what's really going on underneath, right? Where it's like, okay, is there uh, some emotional scarring? Because mm-hmm. everybody has some kind of trauma, right? I mean, some just learn to deal with it better than others. Um, you know, is it just the way I reacted to that trauma and just the story that I was telling myself was inaccurate or ineffective? And ultimately, yeah, like what is the action you're going to take? And at what point will you decide that the obstacle is no longer something you're going to, you know, continue being an obstacle, right? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that's basically what it comes down to. It's like what Tim Ferriss says, right? You know, you're only... Uh, how successful you are depends on how many uncomfortable conversations you're willing to have. So I got to be honest uh, with you though, if that's the, the case, then I'm always talk uh, in an uncomfortable conversation because apparently stuff that I'll talk to people about is uncomfortable for them consistently. I mm-hmm. I'm trying to find the right way to say this, but um, so apparently they can test for just mm-hmm. about anything medically nowadays. And uh, oh, yeah. due to my background in history, they were worried more about my mental state more so than my physical state because they're like, okay, well, he's walking around. He's able to talk. Mm-hmm. He's able to move even though he doesn't have full use of one side of his body, but he's awake. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. But now they're worried about my mental state. They're wow. like, okay, let's check him mentally. So I've been in and out of hospitals in the past. I finally stopped when I turned 18. So I have a very dis, very huge distaste mm. for hospitals. But and one of the things they tested me for is I don't mm. what they call an empathy test. Apparently that's a thing. I didn't know that. Uh, mm-hmm. And I tested it with under five mm. percent, and apparently that's bad. They were, um, mm. I guess you could say, notably worried. <laughs> the word they used. <sighs> 
uh, was that I don't like this word. The, the word they associate with people who are similar in, in mindset like that to me are people who are psychotic or psychopaths. I don't understand what that. Yeah, because they said that people of those natures oh, wow. are people who tend to have the lowest level of empathy. They don't care uh, what happens to the other person genuinely or what mm. or how it how anything they do affects them. When in reality, mm. that's not actually the case. It's just that. Mm. Uh, for me, if there's no reason to do it, why? But you know, that's that's mm-hmm. neither here nor there, mm-hmm. I guess. I mean, I'm dating someone who's trying to become a counselor, who's a social mm-hmm. worker, so it's a constant thing every day when she's trying to do therapy on me, mm-hmm. and I'm like, you probably shouldn't do this. We're going to end up fighting in ten minutes, and it usually <laughs> ends up happening. And and then I have to walk mm-hmm. away because I'm like, wow, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm in the wrong. I'm ob- actually, to be fair, I'm never in the mm-hmm. wrong, but I'd rather be in the wrong than, mm-hmm. you know, have her constantly upset with me. The good news is she understands this isn't my fault. I'm not doing this on purpose. I deal with <laughs> issues of regression. Okay. I, uh, I don't understand emotions mm-hmm. and I only have, I think about half of what I'm supposed to have. And apparently mm-hmm. if my level of empathy is under 5%, that's a, <laughs> that's definitely proof of that because, We've had instances where people are like, mm. you know, if uh, animals on the side of the road and you saw them injured, what would you do? And my answer was put them out of their misery. Apparently, people don't like that response. <laughs> mm. It makes them uncomfortable. So, mm. but I, yeah. I want to I want to ask you about the mm. your uh, let's see here your message that you sent me. Uh, it says that you'd be interested in my podcast. That's great. Mm-hmm. You talked about your journey as a pharmacist, becoming conflict resolution for mm-hmm. Asian American leaders. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the second half where you mentioned mm-hmm. uh, being fired, uh, the issue with mm-hmm. paychecks, people, and roommates and such. Let's, let's go ahead and talk about that if yeah. that's all right with you. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, no, that's, it's in the pitch. It's, it's fair game, right? Uh, yeah, no, it's, so the journey is, is definitely crazy. It's not what I would have picked for myself, mm-hmm. but it's exactly what I picked for myself, right? Um yeah, I was working in a chain pharmacy up in, in Tennessee. I don't know. My mom was, even though she's never worked a day in her life in chain pharmacy, is the expert, you know. And, and so she's like, work for this company um, and have the stability that your dad, you know, who's an immigrant, struggled with gainful employment, just work for this company and, you know, don't struggle like he did. And the problem is, is that you don't realize what that stability costs you until, you know, you're actually experiencing it. And you, so you try to console yourself with the fact that you're getting nice benefits in a 401k. But if you hate your job, you know, and in their eyes, they said, no, that's the price. And that's OK, because from their background, that's OK. Like you just have to sometimes there are things about your life you just have to just kind of deal with and just be thankful for what it allows you to have. But. For me, I'm just like, I don't, I can't sell for this. Like I, I, I wanted something better. I wanted the job I could actually look forward to. And so um, I leveraged my connections to get a teaching job through a pharmacy consulting company that I left Tennessee to come down to Houston for. And, you know, initially I thought, wow, this is great. I had a lot of fun. But then 11 months later, I got fired. And that was my mistake. You know, that was my fault. It, you know, for a company that I was working for, right, as long as I was th- better than 70% of the workforce, like if my boss was legitimately upset at me at something for me for something, I knew I wasn't going to get in any real trouble because mm-hmm. she knew that overall I pulled my weight. But now I'm at a company that is deliberately holding me accountable right. for the job I was hired for, right? And they are not looking for people who, uh, you know, tell them stories as to why you didn't get the job done. Like that was my, mis- that was my, you know, hope was that, oh, you surely don't understand why I didn't get the job done. It's like, no, we're not paying you for stories. We're paying you for results, right? That's true for any company. Uh, you know, successful companies don't tell you why they didn't succeed. They just are, right? And so, yeah, it was one wake-up call uh, that I was not ready for, and I did not appreciate it at the time. But, you know, for right now, I tell people it was one of the best days of my life because that's what it took for me to realize, hey, stop being a victim. Like this company doesn't like people. They don't hire victims. They hire people who are successful. And so the next reality check was when, yeah, I stumbled into a job Oof. where four of my paychecks bounced filling for crooked doctors. And this guy was bad news. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not great. But how do I confront a guy when I've been conflict averse my whole life, right? When he's clearly shown me that I cannot trust him, but I'm too afraid to confront him. And so, 
you know, that went on for a couple months where I just was like, I'm just going to give this guy grace. And they're like, Jerry, you can't pay your bills unless he pays you. Like you don't like you holding him accountable to paying your checks is not being white or diva ish. It is simply, (laughs) you know, collecting your money that you earned that he's promised to pay you. And so after that, you know, lasted way too long. It was a total of about nine months. I, you know, my friends got me out of that job, got me into another one that um, was more legit, but they couldn't pay me more than eight hours a week. And so I said, well, you know, uh, what do I do? And they said, well, you can get more hours if you cover it at our Austin location, which is about two and a half hours away. And it could end up in worse places, but it just wasn't home. And so I'm in working in Austin. This is 10 years ago now, and I have no idea what my life is going to look like. Uh, that summer was key because some friends of mine who run the pharmacy leadership nonprofit, they uh, they said, hey, we know you've been facilitating workshops on the fraternity side, but we need help with our leadership seminar because one of our facilitators backed out. Can you step in? And I said, absolutely. And so teaching leadership and seeing it modeled for me uh, did something where mentally before I just said, oh, leadership is hard. I you know had a couple difficult conversations. They didn't go well. I just won't want to deal with it. I'll never get good at it. But now I thought, well, what if I could be good at it? You know, will I give myself permission to possibly be a good leader? And so uh, when a full-time manager position opened up in Houston a couple months later, I said, absolutely, want to come home, got to take on this challenge. Austin T was great. I missed them, um, but I knew I couldn't stay there. And I proceed to get written up the following year because uh, I have technicians who are not pulling their weight and I am not writing them up or firing them. And management said, you know, their behavior is a problem and your passivity is a problem. And so, you know, that falls on you. And so while I'm in the doghouse, uh, the company has their funding pulled because the owners just decided, you know, we don't want to do this anymore. So I was like, well, you know, I was going to leave anyway, just it's a little more urgent now. And um, so I I managed to get an interview. And the only reason I get an interview with another company is that now I have leadership experience on my resume. And so I tell people, you know, leadership saved my career. And from there, just it was just like hopping from iceberg to iceberg where you know these jobs would be available that i wouldn't have had otherwise but they would only last one or two years because the business model wasn't sustainable and so five years ago now Mm. when my previous employer got gunned down by insurance audits i said you know i'm tired of you know chasing scripts from doctors and tired of fighting insurance companies but i love people development what would a career in coaching and facilitating look like and um, still very scared of failing rejection. So it was just more of a hobby than anything else. And then the pandemic hit. And, you know, I, I'm grateful for my pharmacy job. That's what got me through the pandemic. Absolutely. But October 2020, I said, OK, what's it going to take for me to get some real skin in the game um, and really try to make this dream a reality? So the first year of business was just try, struggle, fail. You know, most of my money that I made came from private tutoring, actually and uh appeared on like 70 or 80 podcasts just trying to get my name out that was fun um i met thing. a lot of great it's, people it's, and you know, uh you know still I, mean, trying. I can understand the struggle oh, yeah, yeah, like, no, I, I was at school great, I, you know? I needed to get a regular job and i was like mm-hmm. you know what working at ihop wasn't gonna cut it so mm-hmm. i was like uh i need to get something else and then mm-hmm. in 2019 late 2019 i was like hey mm-hmm. la universal is hiring you could become a security officer and i'm like Sure, why the heck not? I mean, I'm going to school in San Antonio. I, the school is not that far from downtown. I don't have my car because mm-hmm. I'm not living in Houston at the time. So I'm like, sure, why not? So I go get my, my license. I, I had to take the test. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly, being a security guard, that's exams, it's not that hard. It's mostly common sense. So I get my license. I start working mm, with them. Fair enough. I'm like, I know Allied Universal is not great. I hear so many complaints about it. I, I know my family members have worked for them. Uh, certain ones have. And I'm like, they're not known for being the best, but at least they pay, you know, I mean, sometimes you have to kick them in the knees to get them to pay, yeah. uh, but they pay. They don't. So I'm like, okay, yeah. fine. I'll become a security guard. Worst comes to worst. Something happens. At least I have a job, even if it's in an area I don't want to be. And then not even, I'm not joking. Mm-hmm. Not even like a good couple months later, February hits and they're like, yeah. So apparently mm-hmm. there's a pandemic. All students now have to go home. My boss did not like that, but he knew he had to transfer me because I had nowhere mm-hmm. to stay. Didn't have mm-hmm. an apartment. There wasn't enough time to find one. Mm-hmm. So I had to pack up me and my mm-hmm. brother, who was attending the school, and come back to Houston. So the good news was mm-hmm. when I came back, I didn't have to sit on my butt with no way mm-hmm. to pay any of the bills I had. 
I was a security guard, so I was therefore considered necessary, mm -hmm. just like you. So, I mean, it worked in my favor. So I can understand just how bad mm -hmm. that was. Uh, I mean, it, it was terrible for a lot of people. I'll yeah. tell you what was worse, though. Being a security guard when people did come in because they had to still work and they looked at us like we're the mm -hmm. devil. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's not our fault. We're here. We're here because mm -hmm. you want to be here or you have to be here. Yeah. But that means that now you have to go through us because the whole building's mm -hmm. on lockdown. I don't care if you're the president on the 14th floor. Mm -hmm. You set the rules. You have to follow them, too. Mm -hmm. So if the rules say by your mm -hmm. order that only the person working and a partner could come in and not the family. You can't bring your family in this building, you know, unless you want to change the rules. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they, yeah. they, they finally did change the rules only for it to all get, you know, washed under the bus in 2021 where they're like, yeah, you know what? Don't worry about the mask law. Don't worry about being six foot apart. It's not saving anybody. People are dying anyway. So who mm -hmm. cares? You know, now look at us. We're able to go around all over mm. Houston like it's not a problem. So that's the thing. Uh, so yeah. you, aside from the bounce checks and you getting displaced from another city, um, the last thing here you have is you have mm. to evict a roommate. What happened there? Oh yeah, yeah. That was uh, <laughs> that was a moment of growth for sure. So um, yeah, basically what happened was you know there is a guy that. Uh, it was a friend of mm -hmm. a roommate that I was previously rooming with. And so when I bought my townhouse, um, you know, Casey came with me and he said, Hey, you know, we're, you know, the other two roommates, we just didn't want to keep around because they were, you know, they had kind of run their course and say, so says, Hey, I know a guy, we'll call him Mike. And so I, I know Mike, he's a good guy. I think he'd make a good roommate here. So I was like, sure. Mike's a flight attendant. Right. And, or as we was working as one at the time. And so he said, yeah, you know, and I said, okay, Casey, you know, I'm, I'm, ba I'm banking on you and your reputation that this guy's going to be a good fit here. And initially he was, you know, his, his pay schedule was kind of weird. He had to pay me in the middle of the month because of the way his paychecks were. And I said, okay, as long as they clear, you know, I'll make do. And, you know, and initially it was great because he was a flight attendant. So, you know, he'd go on trips all over the world. So he wouldn't be in the house, but he'd still have to pay rent. So he's just basically, you know, renting out room for storage, which was fine. Um, when he came home because of his jet lag, he would, it would just kind of get weird. He would get up at weird hours and, you know, stuff. He was kind of half awake and the kitchen would be kind of a mess every once in a while, but he didn't do anything overly terrible, like bring home weird girls or anything like that. So, you know, it was, it could be worse. I've seen it happen, you guys. It's, I don't have time to go into all those stories, but anyway, so it got weird when, um, Mark's decided to, sorry, I should have said Mike. Mike decided to uh, get a job that is uh, more more at home. And um, between getting like bouts of identity theft and other things, you know, it, it, like his, the paychecks kind of, or his, his rent checks kind of started getting, you know, lag a little bit in time and, you know, as long as they cleared, I was okay with it. But then he was starting to really stretch the limits. And at one point, uh, because he was only living month to month, I didn't have a lease in place. And so at one point they started bouncing and it was like, okay, you know, he made up for it, thankfully. But then there was a point when I said, okay, you know, uh, starting at the beginning of the year, if you're going to keep living here, you're going to have to sign this lease or, you know, zero out your rent and then leave. And so thankfully he signed the lease because he's, <laughs> I'm the landlord. So it's like, either you sign this or you, or you get out. And, um, yeah, there was a point when, you know, he, he, um, he left for a party and, uh, didn't get it approved. It was an extended trip. He thought he had a uh, vacation time approved at his employer. It turns out he didn't. So he ended up getting fired. And so then, you know, now whatever savings he had left, I guess he just decided to, just like uh, cope with whatever mechanisms he had instead of be disciplined with the savings he still had left, help cover rent to actually get back on his feet. And then, you know, at some point he missed two months of rent cons uh, consecutively. And that was the end of the lease, except that he still just stayed in his room, just daring me to actually evict him because, you know, every time. And so it just got frustrating. And at some point, you know, my friends told me, Hey, look, 
you know, if you, there's no lease in place, you can kick them out whenever you want. Just call up the cops, you know, you know, escort them off your property for trespassing, but it's up to you to really go, go through with it. And, um, you know, me, of course, being so conflict averse and trying to be a nice guy, trying to help him get on his feet. And it's just kind of like, no, like you've given him job leads, you've given him, you know, things you've tried to line up interviews for him or whatever, but he's obviously the results are lacking. And so, you know, I've, you know, best thing I can do is like type up an eviction letter, stick it on his door and just check, you know, make sure he checks it. And, you know, of course, by then he starts, you know, panicking and begging and, you know, we gave him one less ultimatum because he, he felt like as long as I was hoping that he would actually come through with the rent money that um, I would just keep him around. And he kept using empty promises. And at some point I just had a moment of clarity and I just said, okay, you know what? This isn't about the money. Um, you've, I've given you every chance you've asked for and you've nothing to show for it. So, um, you know, if you do get any money, please use it to cover rent at where you're living next. And that was the only time I finally saw him like start to pack things up and move. And I mean, I was surprised that that's basically he yeah. realized, when he realized he had no leverage, uh, at that point, um, you know, and it was just hard because, you know, you, you hated to see this just kind of like this cascade from what he used to be to what he became. And, you know, I was sad, right? Because, you know, he was, you know, last day when he finally moved all his stuff out, he took an extra day, you know, which is, I was fine to give it to him, but, you know, he was like, hope you may, I hope I'll make you proud hope. of you. Help him, you know, hope you'll be proud of me again. It's just like, it's like, that's <laughs> cute. Get out. <laughs> you know? Oh man. Well, what can you do? Yeah. There are a lot of people out there that just uh, they 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 don't they don't work. <laughs> I don't know how to. Well, <laughs> I don't know what. No, you know. Well, no. I mean, we can we can, if it's any consolation, guys. I mean, it's like. Cause I dealt with the same thing, right? I got fired and you know, it, you have to hit rock bottom sometimes before you realize, okay, you know, I have to, I have to, you know, get back on my feet. And, you know, I took mm -hmm. no satisfaction in that. Right. And I know my, you know, my bosses who fired me took no satisfaction, you know, they're upset and they're like, okay, stop, you know, burning our payroll. And, but at the same time, you know, it was done out of love. They're like, look, the most loving thing can do for you is just let you just like, kind of kick you out and give you some tough love and just trust that you're going to be strong enough to learn from this and get back on your feet. And, you know, to his credit, you know, Mike got a job shortly after he moved out and, you know, I take no credit in the fact that I'd like to thank that, you know, you know, evicting him was the wake up call I needed so that he could realize, Oh God, I can't keep freeloading off Jerry's generosity anymore. Like I, you know, that's, I can't keep doing that. Um, and yeah, I better get, yeah, back it, it, it's one of those things where, um, cause I've had a, I had a nasty roommate I had to get rid of. Um, I lived with him for a year. He was a great friend. Mm -hmm. He always pulled his weight, but where it, it mm -hmm. fell short would be yeah. when it came down to paying rent and being fair or what's equal with everything. He was always so, so mm -hmm. wishy-washy. He would pay his rent, mm -hmm. uh, but he had this big old oversized mm -hmm. dog. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful dog, but he was never oh, home. No. He was always working, working, working. And if he was home, he was in his mm. room. I mean, okay, so first mm. off, I'm a college student, but I'm a gamer and I love anime. Okay, so that's my thing. All right, so he's similar okay. in the same yeah. same regard. Awesome. Anime, games, he mostly plays shooters. I like RPGs. I like to think about what I'm playing. So, you know, but we both play one specific RPG kind of. that we both share. That would be Final Fantasy fourteen because the Final mm -hmm. Fantasy series is <laughs> I love a good story. Okay. Perks of being a millennial, I guess. I don't know. We're the only generation left that still likes a good story. <laughs> uh, your generation and the ones before are the same way. Gen Fair Z enough. and Alpha, I don't know what's wrong with them. But, mm -hmm. but, hey, that's a topic for a future podcast. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But, uh, you know, that's the whole – because I have two different ones. <laughs> one I just started recently and one I've had since 2017. And – that's the one I started because I was bored up nice. in school. Um, that's a separate story. I'll get into that mm -hmm. uh, in an actual episode. I'd love to have you back. Sure. But uh, so, but I was staying with him sure, for man. a year, and a rent was already sixteen hundred. 
he had the lights in his name. He had the internet in his name. I asked him if he did at least transfer one thing to my name. He said, no, it'd be easier if you just give the money to me. Me not wanting to be confrontational is like, you know what? Fine. I can get you your money. Every now and then something would happen that would prevent mm. me from having the money and I would mm -hmm. be short, but I would always try to make it up and then I'd give it back to him. But here's where it got odd. I'm here taking care of his dog. Yeah. I'm watching his dog. I'm feeding his dog. I'm walking his dog. Mm -hmm. I'm making sure the dog has food when he forgets to get food or he ran out and he didn't realize he ran out. Every time I turn around, he's not buying stuff in the kitchen mm -hmm. for food, but he's eating what's there. We're both cooks, but he's a chef at a mm -hmm. bar, but I've actually mm -hmm. tried to go to culinary school. The pandemic ruined that. I would, I would have loved to finish that. But I'm gonna finish my actual degree before I go back to do that. So mm, fair enough. Yeah. So I, I want to. I want baking fair is enough. a science, cooking is a theory. So um, yeah. But I was always taking yeah. care of his stuff. The place always smelled like dog. It was just. It was a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. Plus, I lived in one of those buildings where it's mm -hmm. enclosed, so there's no direct link outside. You have to go to the parking tower mm -hmm. or go down an elevator shaft. It looked like a hotel. <laughs> luxury living, mm -hmm. apparently. If that's mm -hmm. luxury, I think I'll stay in a house. Or a regular <laughs> apartment because I have room. Yeah. I know you can't see it, but I have room. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I could take off my background with that. I believe you. The point besides the room isn't presentable right now. There's a pillow that's been yeah. pinned to the wall. Okay. Don't ask why. Um, hey, I haven't gotten my bowling balls out of storage yet to take out my frustrations. So, but that's how I, that's how I keep myself from being angry at people. But it got to the point where after a while it was becoming so synonymous where I was so sh I became short one month for, for rent completely because my parents mm -hmm. uh, and my family was going through something. We had uh, recently had a loss in the family. And when I say that, not one, not two, but mm -hmm. four people in one month, each one back to back. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and it mm -hmm. made it hard to work and go to school. I ended up having oh. to drop out that semester, which put me a whole semester behind. Uh, I'm still finishing, but I'll be finished next May mm -hmm. instead of this fall, like I was supposed to be. But that whole incident got to the point where I just had enough. I just couldn't take it anymore. And thank God I had a wonderful girlfriend. She helped me pack up my mm -hmm. stuff, move out. I ended up moving in with her, which at the time may have not been yeah. the smartest move. But we finally gotten used to being around each other where we got this apartment. And while we do still butt heads, we're both firstborns. We're going to butt heads. You know, but she, I, I honestly believe that she's yeah. more stubborn than I am. I mean, to be fair, okay, as you can see above my head, it says dark cancer interview. I'm a dark mm -hmm. cancer. She's a Capricorn. I feel like her being stubborn mm -hmm. is just in her nature. Mm -hmm. Whereas me being anti-emotional, mm -hmm. the title dark cancer fits. Because apparently mm -hmm. cancers are supposed to be emotional. Fair enough. I'm not that way. I care. Really, I do. <laughs> but mm -hmm. no <laughs> yeah so sure. but um it's okay i saw that you didn't um actually see that i had set everything up on uh pod match it's perfectly fine um mm. uh, yeah it, 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 <laughs> it's Thanks. one of those things where it just uh let's see we'll update this right quick because it's asking if you actually did the interview i'm gonna say yes Thanks. Yeah, no, it was, you know, last week was bad because my relief pharmacist had to call in. And so I was just happy just to put out whatever fires. And then when I finally rechecked the messages and I'm just like, oh, no, <laughs> he rescheduled twice and then canceled it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> let me reach out. Yeah, no, it, it so, asks because it always asks for a rating of people. I don't really leave comments unless I absolutely have to. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, interview, though, will be mm -hmm. available. I want to say Tuesday. It'll be available on my pod, on my uh, YouTube channel. Okay. Um, yeah, so it'll be available on my YouTube channel, oh, and it'll also go live as a regular episode on my Food for Thought podcast. It won't go live on my other one. I have uh, it's called uh, Dark Cancer Discussions. It's the other version of this title. <laughs> so with that okay. one, it's uh, just a discussion about random cool. stuff. Food for Thought is the whole. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through this real quick. So that way you know the difference between the two. Because when I send you the link sure. for my Calendly, uh, Cal, mm -hmm. Calend, Cal, yeah, that's that. I can't Calendly? pronounce it. It's, yeah. it's, I use it's it a too. dumb name. Um. <laughs> uh. Anyway. That was weird. So I'm running Windows 11, and I'm still having to reprogram a lot of things. I'm looking at it like, why did it just give me this in orange? 
But anyway. No, I, so I, I pressed enter, oh, and my mind. whole computer yeah. theme changed from black to purple. And I'm like, not really. That, nice. It's a weird, it's a weird purple. Not this purple, not the one above <laughs> no, my I mean, head. Yeah, it's, it, um, uh, that kind of purple. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so, but... Uh, okay, got it. Yeah, no, so Yikes. when it comes down, so Food for Thought podcast is the whole thoughts of it were you. How would you feel if you were in the other person's situation? Or certain things that people should know, mm-hmm. but don't know how to use kind of like the basic whole premise of what you just explained and what you gave in your pitch on pod match. So mm-hmm. like I've covered date rape. Mm-hmm. I've covered, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, because someone requested it, but it's a valid point. Wow. I did suicide prevention. Most of you, that was the month at the time nice. when I recorded that one. I've done dark history facts. People seem to like that. Like mm-hmm. what was the dark history behind Valentine's day? I want to do that one. Mm-hmm. I haven't done it yet because uh, Hmm. It, it's gross. <laughs> it's gross. It's gross. You, if you, if you know, if you, no, if you okay. know the history okay. yourself, people, then you people know why don't want bland and gross. boring. Yeah. Uh, I've had some people ask for the, uh, to do my podcast on contraception. I did that. It was six episodes. That was uncomfortable as heck, especially the last one. You know, mm-hmm. as a guy, that's not pleasant. Wow. You're a pharmacist. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah no it's just yeah, it's always no weird talking about some conversations stuff. Uh, in those podcasts i don't always have someone talking with me it's occasional it does happen every now and then but it's usually me by myself um uh, the other option is for live mm-hmm. actual live uh recordings it'll be on this platform mm-hmm. through this platform but it'll be on youtube so you'll be live on youtube uh mm-hmm. through riverside i like the way their platforms wow. dynamic works out well um the other option is an open discussion. Mm-hmm. It's just audio. Um, it, it can be video, mm-hmm. but it's just audio. It's for the dark cancer discussion where we talk about random topics within a certain variant. So it's not focused. It's not scripted. I don't have anything I'm working mm-hmm. with as a, mm-hmm. as a means to talk about it like yeah, uh, whatsoever. So you can take your pick as to which one you want to schedule for. Uh, I forgot to put the YouTube live one up. But that one I'm not worried okay. about because, like I said, I'm not starting that until probably next week or the week after. Um, but you can definitely check out the okay. YouTube channel if you'd like. Um, but other than that, that's the three different ones. Sure. Which one do you think would be probably be more uh, benefit for you, though? Um, yeah, I think uh, I think the the. Um... I'm just trying it's to think. Okay. I'm just trying to cycle back through them. I mean, I no, we're good. I um, I'm thinking that just so just to go over them again. So you said you have an unscripted one. You have a you have a more scripted one. You said yeah. That, so like, yeah. So like the certain topic let me go ahead. And, I'm gonna so, put this in the or, chat so you can okay. see this. Okay. So um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that would be helpful. Nope. Don't. Got don't. It. Yeah. <laughs> So you'll be able to see them both on uh, YouTube. So I'm going to send you two links. The first yeah. one is the okay. one where my regular podcast cool. is hosted. So you can see the titles of every episode. There it is. And mm-hmm. and then the other okay. one All right. is the non-scripted one that takes place on my YouTube channel. All are going to be posted on my okay. YouTube channel. I had it for a while, but I've never put anything on it because I didn't have a okay. way to. I had to rebuild my computer. So Got it. Yeah, that was okay. uh got it. Oh, you're going to love the story behind that. My brother my brother <laughs> let my my brother let my computer uh, we can catch go on with fire the... from a Go ahead, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> my brother let my computer catch on fire from That's a wasp good. getting inside of it. Yeah. Yeah, so it bri- it bridged oh, two nice. connectors on the motherboard <laughs> yeah. and it fried That's it. That's the... Oh wow! No, wow! And yeah, you he can't likes fire, but yeah. even he knew that was bad. So, um, but yeah. So if you check out the YouTube channel, you'll see everything mm-hmm. there. The old podcast that you're looking at on uh, on Anchor, okay. Anchor.fm forward slash Neogentrix. Mm-hmm. That's my go to mm-hmm. name. Mm-hmm. That's that's a host name. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm Neogentrix. Okay. So all right. Um, yeah. On okay. the food for thought one, I've had that one since 2017. I'm still doing it. Episodes for that probably won't be coming out as often. Okay. As uh, will be coming out more often than anything else, because there's something I can pre-record. If you want to be part of that okay. one, it's a little bit different, um, mm-hmm. but we can do that. Okay. It's sponsored by Spotify, so you'll be on Spotify too. 
<laughs> um, versus this <laughs> one sure. here, um, where it's just going to be on YouTube with the links in mm -hmm. the description. Each video will have links in the description uh, so that you can see the... Mm -hmm. uh, So you can see all the different platforms that it's available on. I had to think for a minute. I forgot. Got it. No, we're good. That's okay. Um, yeah, we can just go the with the new Tatrix ones. So like the, the one original, on, uh, on Anchor? Um, and we can just see what happens there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, cool. Fine. That one's we available on that, 25 platforms yeah. of, that I'm aware of. I didn't. Uh, that was something new to me this year. Okay. Uh, Amazon Music became available as of three months ago. Okay. So congratulations. You'll, you'll end up being on Amazon, too. Oh boy! <laughs> sure, I'm glad you, you like the thought of that. So, but this episode will probably go up there as a bonus episode. Uh, you'll see the live video on YouTube. I've sent you the link for that, um, and then you'll also mm -hmm. see the uh, cool. the audio version of it possibly go live on Food for Thought as well. Don't forget to subscribe. That way, you know when the videos are going live. And if you see a topic that you want to discuss by any chance, uh, so okay. something I can revisit, or say I missed something in mm -hmm. what I've covered and you want to add to it, mm -hmm. we can definitely go back and visit it. There are times when I do that. Mm -hmm. Like right now, the topics of discussion okay. for the Food for Thought podcast that I have is learning styles. That's what I'm doing now. I'll divvy mm -hmm. off of that every now and then to give some variety. Okay. But that's where mm -hmm. we generally are. Mm -hmm. But with that, I would love to thank you for your time. You were amazing. It's like, as far as people are concerned, I'm very, I guess you could say I'm a little nitpicky mm -hmm. for the simple fact that I, uh, I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. It's bad enough I can't trust anybody outside. So, oh, and I forgot to ask. So you said you used to yeah, live in Dallas enough. or work in Dallas. Where do you live yeah. now? Oh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm in Houston now. Yeah. Like I, so I was, I was in Knoxville. I moved to Houston. I worked in Austin and then I came okay. back to Houston. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay. So if I have any messages or anything I need to tell you, I'll definitely send it to you through Podmatch because they have a chat there. Um, interesting. Sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll there. go from there. I also live in Houston. I just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> cool. So if we have, yeah. So yeah. Oh, if, uh, if yeah, I ever do any. City you know, local hosting or anything, or if you ever want to meet up for whatever reason we can. Uh, but I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, Have fun, fun and stay safe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. You too. We'll be in touch. All right, everybody. Well, that was it. That was Jerry Fu. Thank you for joining us for this interview. Look forward to seeing him in the future on later episodes. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe. <laughs> Powered by Riverside FM.